I'm Mark Boris and this is Straight Talk. Here's to you, mate. Cheers, thank you. Actually, that's pretty fucking good, dude. Don't tell anyone. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Tai Tuivasa is repping Western Sydney on the UFC world stage. But I think the UFC are smart as in they give you a platform and it's up to you what you want to do. <clears throat> Sorry, I had a, the Mighty Panthers one on the weekend, so there was a few... Inside and out, the view of Penrith is changing. We know different. Like we just, well, we might dress different, we might talk different, but I'm proud of where I'm from. We have big companies. We have we have smart business people out there. Why out of everything that we're good at, you put struggle straight on the national television, and that represents us. Get fucked. Oh no, you're gonna give me in trouble. Fuck. <laughs> Tai Tuivasa, welcome to Straight Talk, mate. Thank you for having me. It's been a fucking long time trying to get <laughs> together. Yeah, and you're back. You're back here on Australia for a bit. Till next week. Till next week. Mm. So, like, I, I, I can never get my head around that. Like, it's a tough call, you know, leaving your family go, and, mm. and, and leaving your group, going overseas and training. A lot of times I see you in Dubai, but I know you've been in Thailand. What's the deal with training, the training regimes in those places, and why do you do that? Why do you go overseas to train? Honestly, I think it's just to keep myself grounded. When I come home, I get a bit excited and uh, I kind of I'm, – I'm easily uh, distracted. Yeah, yeah. If that makes sense. Is that because you're really social? Like you're really – I am I am very social and I can – well, I know when I work, I work. And yeah. when, I, when I don't, I don't. So I just try to do the right thing and keep myself ahead. And I know if I keep active, I will stay on the ball. Yeah, so like, mm. so when you go over, say like Dubai, I've often, I see your stuff and I wonder where do you stay? Like, I mean, is there a big gym on top of the building or something? Like, I mean, do you look like you're training outdoors on top of a building or something? No, nah, no. Nah. Oh, that's that's a, the, one of the facilities that we train at that's on top of the building. But who provides those facilities? Does the UFC do it or do you no, go hunt no, them down no. yourself? Everything, everything is I invest in myself. Right. All the money I, you know, I kind of just put it back into myself and – back into training and where I can and, yeah, I go there and I get good sparring partners. I fly them in and just do my own camp and if it, if it works, it works, you know, and I just keep doing it. And I've got a good thing going there, you know. I've got uh, my coach uh, Sully over there. He's from over here. He's from the area as well. So it's it's his familiar faces but it's it's a, it's a new kind of scene and I, and I like it and it keeps me – on the straight and narrow more, you know what I mean, which is which is good. Yeah, well, that I mean, I guess <clears throat> in your game, you got to be completely disciplined. If you've got a fight coming up in twelve weeks or whatever the case may be, I don't know what your prep period is. Probably what twelve, three mm. months. Yeah, about eight to ten, yeah. ten weeks. So if you've got something coming up, the risk of you not preparing properly is pretty severe because you'll get fucked up. Well, when you're home, you know you can have your brother's birthday or your sister's birthday yeah. or. You know, you know, something like this. So it's easy. You can go out and you might just – where they are, just when I'm there, I'm just stay home. Like home, gym, home, gym, talk to my son on the phone and that's what kind of keeps me drive, you know. Yeah, and how does, he, how does he handle it, like your, your boy? How old is he now, 10? No, he's only five. He turns five. six in November. Shit, so how does he handle that? Like he's at school now. Mm. Well, not now. Yeah, well, next week. Um, And uh, so like he's at school. He's at that age. Um. Does it, it must be pretty tough. Uh, I, I can imagine for him it would be tough as well. No, for it's you very, too. it's, it's, oh, it's the toughest. But at the end of the day, I think it's what I do is I get locked in a cage and I need some fire in me. And, and I know that if I take this guy's head off, I'm going to go take the, the food back home to my, to my son and, and do my best to put him in a, in a, in a better position for a better life, which, Better than what I got. <clears throat> Sorry, I had a, the Mighty Panthers one on the weekend, so there was a few. How good. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, I have no, I remember when I got divorced my first, from my first marriage really young and uh, and I had a five-year-old son um, and uh, he lived in France actually with his mum and uh, I lived here. And uh, I remember one year 
was 986 actually. Um, I thought, fuck this. It was no emails, no mobile phones, there's no shit at all, you know. It just, and then I thought, my Father's Day, 96. So I got on an aeroplane. I said, I'm flying to go see my son for Father's Day because I missed him so much. And uh, I arrived there and uh, un- I didn't announce it. I just went to where I knew the address was because I used to send checks there every week <laughs> to support them. And uh, turned up and uh, I heard this kid uh, up and uh, above me in a building with a whole lot of other kids running around. I looked up there. I was knocking on his door, uh, his house door. He's like a villa. And I was looking up there and uh, this kid yells down, is that you, Mark? And I looked at it was my fucking kid. And mm. I hadn't seen him because there was no videos and shit like that. Yeah. I hadn't seen him for a few years. And uh, they, I'll be honest with you, it nearly broke my heart. And um, I turned around and said, get down here and don't call me Mark, I'm your father. Yeah. And uh, and I, I've never – I've then managed to get him back to Australia the next year after and his mum. Um, it cost me a bit of money to do that but nonetheless. <laughs> but but still, I want him to go to school here because I wanted to, my kid to be close to me. And uh, – and fortunately he is today. But I, I, I must say like uh, I think about you and I think about others doing it, but I think about you in particular because you're the only Australian fighter I know that actually goes away for long periods of time. Yeah. You know, I'm like uh, Volk stays here. Most others just hang around here, you know, and just do the thing here. Um, and I think to myself that's a massive sacrifice and and I know culturally you'd be very close to your kid. Mm. I mean that's your culture. Um, but not only that, just as a bloke. Well, my gut feeling is you would be close to your kid. It's pretty important to you. So do you just say, this is worth it because I can get him a better life? Well, how I kind of think about it is if I put if I put my work in for the next five, six years, so that makes him 10, 11, and I set myself right up, I mean, fuck, I've got another 20 years with him, you know what I mean? That's like, sweet, yeah. Full on where I come from a place where sometimes – Maybe you don't see that fellow anymore or, or something like that, you know what I mean? So I know I'm just got to work and I've got to work and I've got to do the right thing and show him also that if you want something, you got to – it requires sacrifice. And as much as it's good for me, I think it's uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be good for him in the long run, you know what I mean? And I know he misses me and I miss him 50 times more but – um at the end of the day, when you win and when you when you when you bring the the food home for the family, I think it uh, it all pays off. So you you're and by the way, I don't give a shit. Um, fuck it, we both are nakedly advertising in this podcast because we can because we this is, we own this. Um, <laughs> it's it you're na- uh, advertising. And I'm helping you out here because drink West. It's a it's a good brew. It's a good taste. And it's and I think it's very representative of something that's really important. Drink West, and I'm from the West, mm. as you know. And you're definitely from the West. You're further west than I I'm from. I got my whiskey up here, and we might have a taste of both a little bit later. We we'll fuck around a little bit. We're gonna have a bit of a fuck around. But those sorts of things, these doing UFC and doing what you're doing now gives you opportunities to do stuff like this. Is that what you think is is that your strategy? You know, and other things you're yeah. doing other things. We'll talk about it in a moment, but. Is that your go? Mm. You know, I will use the UFC, do my best, try and become the world champion, get punched in the head, whatever it takes because I know this gives me other opportunities which I probably would never have got if I had just hung around. Is that the deal? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I think the UFC are a smart, very smart business which anyone, if you you know, you know, you know. Um, And I think that they give – uh, yeah, I know you hear a lot of fighters go on about pay and whatnot. And if you're going to compare it to boxing, of course, there is, there, we're definitely not going to be on the same kind of level. But I think the UFC are smart as in they give you a platform. Yeah. And it's up to you what you want to do with with the platform they give you. And that's just the bottom line. I think that's – and I think, like you said, for me, I think while I'm here – I've I've seen a lot of people uh, before me kind of fuck up. I think my everything I've learned in my life is from fuck ups. If that that's that's the only way to learn. It costs yeah. you the most. So and I have fucked up a lot, <laughs> and I still do. But yeah, this is my time, and I'm here, and I and, and while I'm here, I'm gonna fucking have a crack. Like did always. anyone give you guidance on it? Like, did someone say this? Hey, mate, this is what you should do, or do you work this shit out? No, just, just by observing others. I'm, I'm a watcher. Yeah. yeah, I just 
like I said, I've, 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 I've been lucky to watch a lot of fuck-ups in my life and um, I just, like I said, I'm not perfect but I want to have a crack and and now I'm learning the legal side of life and like business and stuff like this. I think while I've got the time, I think it's only up to me to give it a shot. Why drink West? Why beer? Tell me about beer. Tell me, would you tell me about that story? Why, why do you think this is something that you can promote and promote well? What's that story about? Well, uh, if you know anything about Western Sydney, I think uh, we're known to 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 love a scrap, love a love a beer, and uh, love each other. And uh, the the actual story was me, my my, my partner Jake Farragut. Well, we've got a few partners now, and uh, we were, we were training and um, we we're sitting on the mats, and he's like, "Fuck, I just I just could do a beer." I was like, "Yeah, fuck, I could do a drink too," and he goes. Let's make your own. Just like that. And I'm a person, I'll, I'll go have a crack at anything. Like I'll, <laughs> I'm easy kind of going, you know. So I said, all right, let's do it. And we did it and we sold it for a ridiculous amount, like like something stupid, like because we had to get it and then we didn't know what we were doing, like with the beer with itself. In terms of brewing it? In, t- in terms of anything, like brewing, you, know, you didn't know you had to brew it, then you had to get it canned, then you have to box it, then you have to… Distribute it. Like we didn't, <laughs> like we just fucking thought, you just go down to the bottle low, you, you get a beer and that's it. And for some stupid reason, everyone loved it and everyone wanted to buy it. So then we are just like, well, I think… We may be onto something here. Like, let's try and do this. And and I, I I always joke around about it, but I always say, if I can't sell beer to Westies, what the fuck can you do? You know. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny though. You sent a couple of years ago. You sent me a box. Where'd you get? Where Where do you get the thought? Oh shit! I was in Boris a box. Like, where do you hit? Where do you think of this shit? Like, uh, or does you got some dude up there directing you guys? No, nah, I, I I was a joke in between our little crew and our group, like a. Our, I call myself the marketing god. <laughs> I don't know why, but but but, but you just, are doing a good job at it. I'm I'm pretty good. Like, well, I'd, I'd like to find knowledge of people who I think that have done a good job and and cunts who don't. I yeah. can tell you haven't done a good yeah. job, yeah, and yeah. I just kind of can tell the difference. So, have you always been the person who sits back and watches and observes and? And sort of tries to you know copy, and I, and I don't mean the bad way because by the way, there's nothing new. Everything's been done before, and the the good business people that I know in my life have been people who just what watch what happens, yeah, and then try and do it the same or slightly better, and are prepared to make a mistake, fuck it up, and, definitely. But don't get all fucking crush themselves because you know they made a mistake. They don't give a shit. Let's just keep going. Have you always been that person? I've always been a doer, but then I think. Um a lot of my friends and a lot of people where I'm from go down the wrong track. So then it become a point where I was like, fuck, maybe I need to start watching what these other fellas are doing is in like the business world and in like legitimately, if that makes yeah, yeah. sense. Yeah. And then uh, I also this another thing, like I was just say, like there's kids in the street that I know that if they were taught these other ways that I'm learning and I'm watching, it would be like, fuck, these kids could become multi-millionaires in, in like that, you know what I mean? But I think... Because um, they've got heaps of talent. Well, a lot of kids, they know how to, they're just like me, you know, they know how to sell things and they know how to... They like, can hustle. They can hustle. I think it's all about the hustle. And I, I think with me, I'm just good at hustling. It's a good example of that, by the way, is, you know, your team, Penrith. Um, like you, someone, like probably Gus, I don't know who it was, maybe Ivan, who sat in that chair a little while ago, thought, hang on, there's a whole lot, what well, you just said, there's a whole lot of people in the area, in, in the Penrith catchment anyway, who got a lot of talent. Mm. If I just somehow get it all together and pull it all together, they can become unbeatable. You know, the way I saw Penrith on the week, like when they played the grand final, for me, there's no team in the competition who could have beat Penrith on that day, but they were just too good, and 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 every player was too good. Everybody in the, in the side, unfortunately, you're going to lose a couple of players, but that's what happens when you win grand finals, you lose them. But do you think that's what what you just said 
is sort of what someone like Ivan Cleary and Phil Gould did when they're trying to build this Penrith dynasty that you currently got out there? Well, I think Ivan, because his kids and stuff went to, he they grew up in the area, you know what I mean? Like, L Juniors have always been the best, not yeah. just the last five years. Like, the past 20 years, we've always had the best juniors. But to... Uh, to put them and create them into superstars, I think, was the challenge. Where a lot of people, they kind of just would get someone from Bathurst or someone from New Zealand. And they wouldn't like give the kids an, an opportunity. Like I know kids are from where we're from aren't like they're not going to be the best kids. Like we, we've, there's there's issues and stuff that people go through at home, which I think now they're kind of understanding and they're like, okay. Well, for example, Penrith, if you play as a team and you want to play for the person next to you, you can succeed and you can become good. And we've won it back to back, baby. Too I good. Know. That's pretty cool. Like, I mean, it's and and I just think there's at, at Penrith now, and by the way, probably the whole West, there's a, a new belief in themselves. And yeah. and you're sort of I don't know whether you started it or whether you're part of it or whether you're riding off the back of it, doesn't really matter. But you talk about it, and you know this call you, you call from the area. You played up pretty hard, mm. and uh, is that about supporting your mob? Yeah, well, there was uh, it was like so. I moved out to uh, to Maruba when I got picked up by the Roosters yep. because I remember it once again. Penrith didn't want me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> maybe because I was too vocal, or, or or I just always been how I am. You know yeah. what I mean? And um. Once I, I never really come out here that much, and then I come out here and I just realize that we're different, and, and a lot of people treated us different. Yeah. And for me, I was like, "Fuck you," like, yeah, we're no different. Like we just well, we might dress different, or might talk different, but fuck you. Like, I'm proud of where I'm from, and I'm gonna keep being proud. So I just kept doing what I'm doing, and and and, and you know and. It's good to see that people are proud of being from where we're from. Like once upon a time we were just, I don't know. You could Shit just, bags. Everyone, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, could just yeah. tell us what, what – what, yeah. you could tell us who we are. Yeah, yeah, totally. No, fuck you. You can't tell us who we are. We are who we are. And, and you, you don't know who you are. You yeah, well, I mean? and, and are you feeling like the the tide has moved or the momentum's moved in in, you got in the kids West in Bondi. We're in TNs and oh, people mate, totally. from people, you know, like this is – Mate, my kids went to school in these suburbs. I'm from West, but they were they fucking – you met my youngest boy. Like he, you took a photo with him outside his office in the city. He couldn't fucking wait to send me the – like I literally got the photo about a minute after uh, you. He, he must have left. He, he was just so excited about getting a photo with you. He got a photo of Volk too. He loves Volkanovski. But like there just seems to me to be a movement in favour like Volk's from Wollongong yep. or, or Wingdang. It's not even fucking Wollongong. Yeah, he's, he's even further. It's worse. <laughs> it was further. It's fucking – well, Windang was actually uh, on the red red list during COVID. Like he was on the side of the road, which was red, so he couldn't even train like in a gym at one stage. But um, but it's – that's this is not just happening, I don't think, in the West Sydney. I think it's happening everywhere. Like everywhere's <coughs> – I think everyone's more accepted now and actually mm. – and, and anyone has got to stick up their ass who lives in, you know, North Shore or wherever it is and says, oh, they're not as good as us as a fucking idiot. We're all born equal, mate. Mm. It's just that well, we need someone to tell us we're equal. Right. I believe we all bleed the same. Yeah. I mean, I, I, mean, I was, you know, I come from a you know, punch bowl and, you know, I always, when I went to university, I was like the only kid from punch bowl there. And uh, I felt totally alienated. Like, I just know what the fuck was going on. Like, and no, most, not many Greeks were there too, you know, like it was, Mostly, you know, wealthy um, kids yeah. from other areas around around Sydney, these suburban stuff. And I, for the first six months, I was I was only seven, and I was I got a bit depressed. You know, I was going to throw it in, but uh, I, I don't know how. What, I went and started playing footy for university, so I started to start. You know, I started to meet a few other blokes and become feel a bit better about it. But you do grow up feeling that way. I had uh, I had uh, Nick Giannopoulos from uh, Wog Boys. Here. You said me last yeah, last yeah, week, I, right? I saw yeah, the, and uh, uh, he, he he was talking about the whole racism thing, you know, and uh, where he grew up as a kid in Melbourne, like it might have been a bit worse for him by the sound of it than to me. But you never, I never really thought about these things until I got older. And you're a young man, mm. you know, and you've been thinking about this stuff for a long time. And uh, I think it's probably generational too. Your generation now thinks about this shit, yeah. and I'm going to do better. I'm not going to have someone tell me I'm no good enough. And I'm and yeah, you know, fuck you. Mm. I want to now. To, I, 
look, I watch all your fights. You know, I love oh, I love UFC generally, but I, I like watching you because you're you're a great entertainer. Um, where did you learn how to entertain? Where did you learn? You know, I got to build a brand for myself, and uh, I can't just be another fighter. Like you know, like mm. I'll be honest with you, like Cyril Gain Beach in the last fight, mm. you know, I find him boring to watch. Like he's boring, but you you got this big personality. Even though you lost a fight, look like, like the way the people around you is like you won because of your entertainment factor, the shooey, the whole thing. Where'd you learn all that shit? Or are you just fucking around? That's just your personality. No, I'm I'm pretty loud kind of person. I'm always a, a I've always kind of had a personality about me. It's uh, funny because my son's got one that's very similar, and I'm just like you know like. Okay, you're going to control this. Yeah, yeah, but he doesn't get to go through some of the things that I've gone yeah, through, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? So I can understand, like, but uh, I've always kind of been a penalty and, like, I think it's like anything. Like, I, I, this is my chance to to separate myself from the pack, from everyone else. This is, that's, yeah, I've never really thought too much into it, but I thought, you know, like, What's the fastest way I can get pissed? And I thought, fuck, I can do a shoey. And once I did it, I was like, fuck, these off. cunts love it. So uh-huh. I'm going to keep doing it. And then now I'm the shoey boy. And like, it's. It but just... everyone's copying you too. The inspired unemployed boys who were here a month, a couple months ago, they got me to do a shoey with their beer. They're called <laughs> Better Beer, whatever it is. Well, the, the thing is, it's not, it's not my thing. Like, I, the, my friends and people I've seen. Around me have done shoeys for a long time, right? you know. Let's go up Kingsville Pub when I was a little boy and just see just some stupid shit, you know what I mean? But like, that's it's in this, it's it represents us as 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 where we're from, as in Australia, and like we're we're good people compared to the rest of the world. Like I've been to some countries and just like these cunts are fuck we. It's like they don't know how to joke around, they don't know a bit of banter and stuff. This I was like, all right, well let's. Just keep showing who we are and, and keep doing what I do and I don't mind it either. So I'm not I'm not too fast. So I thought, why don't I just keep doing it? And then once the Americans kind of got a hold of it, yeah, they they're frothing on it. So I'm cheering. <laughs> totally. I mean, I see him reaching out through the crowd as you're walking back from a, from out of the ring. They please do a show with yeah. me, and you do it happily. Well, I also believe like they come to if the if if people come to watch me, I want to give them something in return. Yeah. Like if I, you know, either a knockout or, or, or a fun song to walk out to or if they're lucky, even get to do a shoe with them, you know what I mean? I'm not, this isn't always a one-way street, I feel. So Cindy Lauper. I mean, like, I that's a pretty weird song to be walking out just before you're about to get bashed or bash somebody, <laughs> one of the two. Um, how do you choose your songs? Like. A lot of my songs are, are uh, jams from me and my mum when we used to cruise around. That's cool. Yeah, so they they remind me of, uh, and they're always bangers. You know what I mean? Me and my mum used to we used to spend a lot of time in the car and um, doing laps and that. So we <laughs> so it also remind me of my childhood and stuff too. So that's sweet. That's, yeah. that's very fucking cool. I, I, one thing I do notice is you you're you're a proud Aboriginal man. So you're. Part Samoan, part Aboriginal. Yeah. Um, First Nations. Um, which nation of the First Nations is your background? So my great grandmother is Kungabula Nation up in Queensland. But my great grandmother was stolen, so we didn't really talk too much about uh, about the ins and outs. If that. Yeah. Say. But my mum was born here in Crown Street, and then and some uh, Margaret's. Uh, in Crown Street Hospital. All women's there. Yeah, yeah it's Ma- Ma- Margaret's Hospital. Yeah. That's where I was born, yeah. And then my family lived in Redfern, my, my grandmother, and then they shifted my grandmother out to Kingsville Park. So it was one of the, the about back in that time, like I said, I don't really uh, I don't really know too much. but And then my my mum grew up out in the country, out Orange and Condo and down them ways. And it is... It, your Aboriginal um, background, I mean, what makes you proud about that? What is it that gives you such such a, a, a big sense of pride? Uh, my mother was always my mother was always proud, and plus, I think it was 
my Samoan side is, is they're, they're very proud of, they're proud, the Samoans are proud people, you know, so I kind of hit a, hit a, a part of my life where I was like different. Well, I was different. My, 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 I, was, I was to another mother. Um, my dad already had six kids to 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 another lady, which is my stepmom. Which I don't believe in step. You know what I mean? So yeah, sounds weird. Yeah, none of that. You know, but she raised me, so my mother's raised me, and um, I was different. I was a different color. I was different. You know, to all my brothers and my cousins. So I reached the point of my age where I was like, well, "Fuck it, I am different." So I got to. I just got to be strong and be, and that's it. I can't help who I am, you know what I mean? So from then on, I was just, but I've always been proud and, and I think it was about teaching, you know, teaching my family that that I am proud and they should be proud as well. And a lot of my family now, they they take in my Aboriginal side and they and they love it, you know, so. It's really this cool. is your Samoan family? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Samoan family. Because I know I, you've got the um, Polynesian yep. sort of um, tattoos on your legs. Yeah. Is that sort of uh, sort of respect to the Polynesian side? Well, the reason I got this was my Samoan mum. I, I was younger when I was little. I said, uh, what's that? And uh, my uncle had one. And um, she said, only real men get that, son. And I was like, well, I'm going to get that for you. And I just stuck to my word. And uh, definitely once I went on the journey, I kinda, I realised that it was bigger than uh, <laughs> it was a lot bigger than what it was, and it's definitely one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. But I I definitely wouldn't take it back. So uh, so you when you carry the Aboriginal flag, um, which is pretty awesome, like it's really obvious. Like, so it's fantastic for First Nations people to see that. Do you feel as though that you get a that you're doing your duty in relation to? The First Nations people in Australia. I mean, do you get much feedback from people? I mean, I see the Rose Brothers. See, did Matty and George go with you over to the yeah. game fight? Yeah. yeah. So, was it both of them or just one of them? The whole family. The whole Mum, yeah, sister. Yeah. Oh, really? Everyone come, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so I guess they see you as a bit of an icon for First Nations people because you know you're putting that on an international stage. It's not just Australians watching. In fact, mostly not Australians watching it. Is that important to you to? sort of at least raise awareness around Aboriginals in Australia? Well, I've never really thought of it like that. I think if I just represent me, so that's my... So you're not trying to make a statement? This is, no, this is, no. this is like, just... Yeah. Obviously, like, I, I get a lot of feedback from my from my people saying, you know, it's mad, but I've seen you, you know, carry your flag and that. And that's, that's, I love that, but it represents me. And I'm going out there to represent me and my family and everyone included, you know what I mean? So... Definitely something that I represent and as I stand for and I always have, but it it shows who I am as a as as you know. And I think the fun thing about fighting is I get locked in a cage by myself and uh no one gets to help me or no one gets to uh there's people you train with that you got your friends, you got your family, the loved ones you you got around you, but no one can help you when you're in there. And uh I kinda I kind of love that. Yeah, let's can we just talk about that for a second? Um, inside that cage or inside the ring, whatever it is, um, you've done some boxing, you've done some kickboxing, you, you obviously a lot of MMA. Mm. Um, you can train all you like with your partners and all that sort of stuff, but the moment you get in, you're on your own. How do you prepare for that? Like, how do you feel when you're walking out? You always look relaxed to me, but mm. how do you feel? Like you think, fuck, you got nerves in your guts? For me, I think that's what I do. I love uh, I love that part of it, that there's another guy or another another, another bloke and, and then there's you and then it's just you. Yeah. Like as in, I don't know if it's like a manly thing or it's like a, see, I'm not really a competitive person as in like, like in, in, in general, but when I think of like fighting or like at the end of the day, I think this guy's trying to hurt me and I'm not going to let anyone just hurt me, you know what I mean, without having a a good crack. And I think that's always attracted me to the to the sport. To the, I've always loved fighting, whether it was in a cage or it wasn't in a cage. I just want to know what it is. But, <laughs> but it doesn't fit. You don't fear 
the the getting in a stink. No, definitely. Either not. officially or unofficially, it's not. It's not something you've. Have you always been that way? No, yeah, always. Yeah, even always. when you're a kid, sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah, and I mean that's a natural fighter to me. Yeah. And then now you've honed, but now you've honed your skills. Mm. Do you have you realized something about yourself and fighting as a result of honing your skills? Do you have more as opposed to fear? Do you have more respect? for your opponent now because think, you now know the skills? I think what it was is was um, – so we were watching MMA. We come on the news a long time ago when we were sitting in one of the boys' garage and and me and my friends were, were a naughty bunch and uh, a few of them just got sent and uh, the, the other boys go, Ty, I reckon you could smash a few of these cunts. And we are sitting there, watched it and was like, yeah, I reckon I can too. So I went down the gym and I started and then um, I just remember this little white guy fucking arm barred me and I, and I like squealed. I was like, fuck. And I was just like, fuck. Imagine if this, imagine if this bloke did this to me on the street. Like he'd, he'd snap my arm like, and I was just like, all right, I need to like, that's mad. Like I want to learn it. Like that's, and I just always had respect for. I think in the gym, it's it's a different respect. It keeps you grounded. You know what I mean? Like if you can become, you can be someone out somewhere else. But once you go in there, you you're only as good as the person giving you a hiding. You know what I mean? So yeah, totally. It is keeps it? you on. It keeps me honest. And then the time I get to prove my real self is when I get locked in in the cage, and I go to. Go to war, or whatever it's called. You've had a, quite a few in in lots of different disciplines, but you've had a, quite a few fights. So, out of all the dudes, oh, I know one guy you fought, Peter Graham. But of all the dudes you fought, who's the meanest, like the toughest person that you've actually up against? <clears throat> I'd say Blagoy Ivanov. Why? It's kind of a guy like you know when you like if you do something with someone and you like. I don't know, with fighting it's like you can tell when someone's a hard cunt. Like, yeah. And that's what I respect. I, a lot of people can beat me on skill and, and stuff like this. Technique, yeah. I'm not the most skillful bloke but I, I, I believe I, I'm, I can, you know, have a crack. This guy, Blagway Ivanov, he's a uh, Belarus or something like this. He's one of those European countries. Well, anyway, someone stabbed him in the in the chest with a samurai sword years ago at the bar and ripped his chest open. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah that's mad. But, like, he's one of those guys I've punched and he's just gone, like, looked at me. He's like, yeah, all right. <laughs> and then I was like, all right, yeah, you're a mad cut. Like, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, it's kind of, I don't know. And then we had, a, we had a punch on for three rounds and we punched the fuck out of each other. But... At the end of it, you know, he's one of the only guys I've said, look, one of the only real guys I've said, like, I've looked at after I've hit and he's just said, come on. You know what I mean? And I and ever since that day I've always, um, I love that. So I've always had respect for him. We've met up a couple of times after the fights and stuff like that. So He's fully got your respect. Yeah. And where, where, how, do you sort of go, you said you're not that competitive, but... You're, I think, number four, rank four or five heavyweight in UFC now around that territory. So what do you do about – do you sort of sit back and go, yeah, four blokes above me, three blokes above me, whatever it is. Do you sort of sit down and plan how you're going to beat them like, or do you just go, well, I'll just take it as it comes? Like how, how do you – do you want to – did you want to knock them off? You know? uh, yes and no. Like obviously I've got like my team to – they're, they're really pushing – but I just fought the best. I reckon he's the best. Game. In, yeah, I reckon he's the best in the whole division. And um, Why did you say that? Well, I think Francis is the champion. Yeah. I think Francis couldn't beat him standing up, so he wrestled him. And I think they show, showed a lot of cards. Francis showed his cards as in... Does that kind yeah, of, yeah, I don't know, yeah, you know no, what I, I mean? Can't like, just, uh, I can't be just standing up, so I'm going to put yeah, it on so the ground. Yeah, so he mixed it up, which I think that um, now I've done it and obviously I lost, but once once you do something once, I always think you can get it a second time. Yeah. And I think that 
when I do fight him again, I reckon I'll get him. Yeah, because you knocked him down the second round, I think it was. Mm. Second round, yeah. yeah. So were you surprised he got he, he caught No, it? I knew I didn't get him. Like I know, you know when you hit someone. Yeah. Like you know when you you can feel it and you, you just know. But I knew that I like I was like, wow, I dropped him, but I knew I didn't I didn't clip him. Yeah, yeah. Properly. But uh once he started hopping around, I was like, fuck, this guy's fit. Yeah. When someone's fit like that, you, they can recover quicker. And once he started jumping around, I was like, yeah, fuck, he's yeah. back. So, he's got good legs. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I mean, because you, you look like you started to, you look like you started to get a bit, you fade a bit on the, or gas a bit, a little bit, because he looked yeah, like you. kept kicking the fuck out of my stomach. <laughs> yeah, no, but he was. <laughs> I was dying. So, how, how, so what do you do about that then, uh, Ty? Like, do you, how, how do you fucking sort of get ready for that again? Like, or do you fight a different fight? Yeah, you got to fight a different fight. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, you, you know, I mean, you're not going to give it away now, I guess, but, like, do you put more work into your, your groundwork, your jiu-jitsu, like, tra- in terms of training We didn't sense? go to the ground once. No, but I'm just for saying him now, or, now, or now. For in general? For, for the future, with him, perhaps. Will you do more groundwork training? With him? No. No. no I'll, I'll, you're going to box him. I'll get him standing yeah. up. Yeah. Because that's his game, that's my game, and, and I believe I'm not going to go out there and – but of course, I, I that's so everyone thinks that because I don't know, uh, because I don't go out there and tap people out that I don't know shit on the ground. Yeah. So I just go on with it. I was just like, okay, sweet. People actually think I don't train still, so I kind of just let them think what they want to think. Yeah, think about their drinking yeah, beers. Yeah, just and think smoking. that I drink beers and and and, <laughs> and, 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 and which is fine because that's that's all I kind of put out. But Instagram is not. Real life, yeah, totally. Well, I, I see you train on Instagram. I, mean, I, mean, I think you put a lot of stuff up for for your training, especially like in terms of fitness and stuff like that. Like I, I've seen a lot of it, and I get, you know, like it, you're doing fight specific training. Look, it looks pretty cool. Like I mean, I often watch some of the stuff you do, especially in Dubai. Um, can I just talk to you about like this is, you know, for me, we had your team out here. Um, we got two seven project. Yeah. It's a, in Western Sydney. Tell us about that. This is a pretty cool project. Yeah, so it's just similar to what you were saying before about uh, <clears throat> how we have the, some of the most talented and, and uh, talented musicians like rappers. We've got football players. We've got um, we've got it all. Photographers, cameramen, or whatever you know. And I thought, uh, you know, with me and a couple of my, a couple of friends that I've known for a long time and. Well, why don't we create our own uh, place where, where someone can come and uh, express themselves in, in not just a sporting thing, you know what I mean? Like a lot of a lot of people think that if you're not making it in sports from where I'm from, you kind of don't make it at all. And um, there's a lot of creative minds, a lot of creative kids and I think that we, if we do that out there, what we're, what we're doing, um, which is – just giving play, people a place to come in and, and obviously you can hire the, the place out. It's a business as, as much as Yeah, so you can anything. rent out a studio. You can rent out the studio. You can take uh, – see, this is not my thing. The, the cycle and the photography and all that, I can barely use my phone. But then again, I can do a lot of my stuff and I don't have to travel into the city. Everything out – if you're from out west, if you have to do something big, you got to travel all the way in the city. Yeah. Where I think now it's like – we're making a big enough name where we can everything we everything the city's got. Why don't we do that here? Well, whereabouts is it though? Like, we, where's your location? Uh Hickey's Lane, which is in Penrith. Right, Penrith. So yeah. In the guts of Penrith. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and and why did you call it two seven project? What's that? So two sevens are starting two numbers of uh, of from probably the Hawkesbury maybe. To oh, is it the whole yeah, Richmond? Yeah, Richmond. Out to probably Blacktown, plus Blacktown. Yeah, so like postcode. Yeah, yeah. Ways, the start yeah. of the two, two, two starting numbers. And tell me a little bit about your partners. Like your, your dudes are involved in you. So that, we've got that? Nico, who's uh, he's uh, he's awesome at like, and he's the one that you know that I'm. He's he running the media side of the stuff, which he's awesome. He's worked with like. Russell Crowe since he was seventeen and shit like that, you know. So he's he's got that, and we got Bomber who's does uh, personal shoes and 
Yeah, you know, these guys are creative guys. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not too creative. But they're your creatives. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. they're creative. Then I got my cousin Chris, who uh, he's with me in FTA. Who uh, he's a big um, big pillar in the community. He's out there a lot with the kids and uh, him and his wife. Um, they do a lot of work in the community, but we we put on for FTA and they have a big say in our community on on you know with with the kids and they interact a lot with them. So. And then uh, I think we just come together and said, Look, let's just do a spot. And I think uh, once we get it going and we, once we can get some streams through like the, the YouTube and stuff like that and so people can really see what happens out our way, I think I think we're onto something. I think it would be good. It sounds like you're doing stuff that government should do or council should do. Like, I mean, you know. No, no one did anything for, no one did anything for, for, for us. Well, no one, like I might be talking on my own. Thing you know what I mean? The only people who did it was you. If you went and got it, you want it, you go and get it. And I'm just trying to do that and give back at the same time. Do you think it's a that's a better way of it happening? If you want it, you got to get it yourself. Do you think, or do you think it's better that people hand it out to you? You got to go get it. It's the only way. Yeah, you appreciate it much more. You can say you got it. Is is your? Do you see? You know. Tied to Avasa, Bam Bam to Avasa's role now as you get getting older, you're not that old, but as you get older, is more a, a leader in your community. I mean, like, but I don't mean a leader as such, but like just pains, you know, helping people out, showing them the way, encouraging them to do shit that they can do. Do you, do you see yourself as having a role for the future? Of your community? Yeah, yeah, no, like I, I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm more, I'm just honest. And I think people love that, especially out in my community. They love that more about me that I'm that I'm that I'm honest. And like, if I can do it, why can't anyone else? I'm not. I didn't. Wasn't born with. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't. No one gave me anything. So I think it's, and I think the people from where I'm from they know that and they respect that more. So I think. I think our time is the older you get, the more you've done. It's more about the next wave. Yeah. Of people. It's funny, Alex Volkanovsky, when he defended his position against Holloway last two, or maybe against Ortega and then Holloway, but he, he got the microphone. He said, I just want to say that back yourself. Yeah. You can do whatever you want to do if you put in, mm. basically. But mm. and you're saying exactly the same thing. You know, like it seems like, and I often say something similar, but like what it seems. What do you think? I think you would. Yeah, you I'm the same. Would. Back yourself. Mm. I mean, my whole show was about making sure that I tell an audience about what it help, what what it takes to be successful. Yeah. That's why I want people like you to come into the show and talk to the audience. Or that's why I do it. That's why I do it. That's yeah. no other reason, just to pay back. Because I've been lucky, people help me in my life and I just try to help others, you know. And yeah. that's seems like because I I got a feeling you might you're only young, but you're you're heading towards that, whether you like it or not, you might get given that role. In your community, yep. you know, it just seems inevitable to me yep. what you're doing, and and you know, like just from the area, that concept of helping kids out, that's a that's a big deal. Not many guys your age do that, to be honest. With you. I'm not trying to blow smoke yeah. up your ass, but you know, like it's you probably don't even realize what you're doing, the impact it has. I think I think one of the things was like <clears throat> we looked at the footy players and stuff, and when we were growing up or whatever, but. Once they kind of made it and they left the area, it's like they kind of just forgot about us. Or does that kind of like yeah, it's yeah. not like it's their job itself. It's, you have, we have our own parents and we have our own family. But I think like once someone kind of got famous or something like that, they kind of left. And, yeah. they, and they, which is which is all great. But I think for me, it's like no, nah, like I want to, I want to show that that. We can be proud and, and we are a team and we are a crew and we can do it. Well, what, yeah, well, I, 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 because you know, I'm, I'm probably one of those people, like, because I, I couldn't wait to get out of where I was growing up because I was, because I tell you what, I, I, I went and met some people who had all these fancy things. I thought, shit, I want to have that. I worked in the city, got a job in the city. I couldn't fucking believe what I was seeing, you know, like Mercedes Benz. Yeah, I've yeah, never yeah, seen yeah. anything like that before. <laughs> I didn't even know it existed. And uh, I thought, I want some of that. <laughs> have a fancy house, go a nice holiday. And, um, so I fell into that one. Um, 
what holds you back? Why do you say it? Because you, you I have uh, I have a, I have a lot of brothers and sisters, and I think I'm not at that point just yet to change all of their lives. But I want to change the my kids and that's lives. Like I want to I want to show them that that I can I I can do it from in front of you. Yeah. So it's and I until I can, like I can't just. I don't know if it makes sense, but I can't just get up and move all my family. It's too hard. I don't have a billion dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But right, we can do it here and we can change ourselves. We have to change ourselves first before we can try and change anything else. Okay, well, if I could just put that over here, what you just said, because that's pretty important. Let's say you did what the Bolter guys did with their beer brand and sold yeah. it for hundreds of millions. <laughs> Let's say you got hundred million mm. for argument's sake. Would you then Let's buy bigger houses in the area? Yeah, so you stay. Oh, of course. Yeah, because you don't want to move. You don't really it's want home. to move. You you want to stay there because that's where you are. That's, my that's home. who you are. Mm. That's cool. So, is it because people don't realize? By the way, Penrith's a pretty fucking nice area. There's nothing wrong with Penrith. Mm. You know, what I mean, there is there's some probably area parts of where you you wouldn't rather not live. <laughs> But there's some pretty good joints too. There's money there. Oh yeah, there's there's, there's a there's, shitload of money there. There's big money there. Like, especially the tradies and what have you. Like they're yeah. they're killing it. Like and they build good houses, big houses, and there's great places to live there. Is it because would you upgrade from where you live now? Would you say get a better house in the area? Is that oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. But that that te- I think for that for that it shows that. If I do that and I do do that, then there's these other kids that are from where I'm from can walk past my house and go, fuck, now look at this cunt's house. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like we can do that too, but we just have to figure out what we want to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah I do. So so you're yeah, – that's – probably wouldn't – yeah, I, I've never you. thought about it like this, but it's like how I think of it is like that's how I used to be as a kid. Like, Did I you? Used to, yeah, I used to be like that because I used to – so I used to be in all these discipline things and this and that and like sports people come in like and get these people to talk like this but then I always thought like but then where are these people when you need them? Like they're not – and I'm not saying I'm going to be like everyone's father. Yeah, yeah. But I think once I see it, if I can see something, I'll, I can do it. I think that's my personal, like that's how I can do anything. If I see someone do something, I'm like, well, I can do that. So do you think then, therefore, if others see you, younger kids do, especially kids, see <laughs> Ty's done that, do you, are you hoping that they're going to say, fucking I can do that too? It's up to them. I'm still here. You can come ask me. I'm still, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, yeah. And that's well, how I feel. Well, what do you want your reputation to be in, say, 10 years? What do you want – what would you like to think of yourself? Not what others think of you, fuck that. But what do you want to think of yourself? Who do you want Ty to be when you, if you look back, Ty? if you go forward 10 years? Is it Bam Bam just to have asked for it? Yeah. yeah. I just want to – I don't want to – I don't want to be anyone else. I just, I'm fine with – I've accepted who I am. And, yeah. And I, think that's, uh, I think that's probably my strongest thing is I know who I am. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't really have anything to. Nothing to prove. Yeah, not really. As long as I keep doing better and keep uh, think if I'm doing if I think I'm doing all right, well then that's you know I can I can always improve and do better. So, but you get to sit down with people like Joe Rogan and stuff like that. Uh, how's that for your life? Like, I mean, I'm, I reckon the guy's a superstar. But how is that sort of? How do you feel when you get to sit down with Joe Rogan? Because he, I mean, he loves talking about you and talking to you. Yeah. Um, like well, the I mean, funny thing about me is I don't really watch anything, so I don't really. <laughs> yeah, but but but, but, how, but how do you feel when you're sitting with Joe Rogan, for example? He rejected me in front of the world once. Did he with a shoey? <laughs> yeah, he, he wouldn't do the shoey. <laughs> he goes, "I'm not giving him my shoe." I was like, "Alrighty then." <laughs> but he thinks you're pretty cool, from my no, way. Yeah, 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 of yeah. course, it's, it's, oh, I, I I get to. And I think that's another thing. I get to be around and see a lot of these people, but it also gives me like I'm fucking right there. Yeah. I'm fucking right there. I'm on their table. I can do this. During COVID, 
What did it do to your regime, or did you just piss off to? I left. Yeah, I went to Dubai. Yeah, that was a, that was when I because it just it killed it. Like it, my so my fight against Greg Hardy, I trained in the in the garage. Here, in Kingswood. Kingswood. Wow. Mm. We just put the gloves on and just spar down there. Um, do pads at the park, and I was like, yeah, well, I can't. I can't keep this up if I want to, because I, I was on that losing streak for a little bit there. You know what I mean? Then I, then I won. Then I, I didn't want to fall off again, so I was just like, I can't, I can't continue to train in the car park. So you went off to Dubai. Mm. Did that? Did you fight and fight on? You fought in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, yeah. I fought Abu off, Dhabi. That yeah. was the first one, one yeah. I got. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, I come back, and then I was training in the in the garage. Back here. Yeah, because the COVID kicked in, the lockdown kicked in. You couldn't mm. go to a gym. Mm. Did you? Did but, but but given you're a professional, that's how you earn your money. Do you think that was fair? That because if you're a carpenter, you're allowed on a building site. You're a professional fighter. You couldn't go to a gym. Well, I don't know. It was a breathing problem, wasn't it? COVID or something? But yeah, you yeah. Couldn't train. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, do you think that? I mean, that's a. To me, uh, like looking back, I think the whole thing's a crock of bullshit. And yeah, that's that's how I feel too. Yeah. Especially when I look at it today. Well, I travelled the world during it while it happened, and mm, it wasn't happening. It wasn't else. going on everywhere else. Yeah. So when you were, say when you were in Dubai, we're getting ready to go to Abu Dhabi because that was during COVID, because that's where they mm. went to fight mm. on. Um, were people sort of like completely locked up like we were here in Australia. Smoking shisha, talking to the people, to, to my family. No drama. Up in Mount Jordan. Yeah. yeah, no drama. And do you feel as though, I mean, I, I know, I mean, I don't know, but I, I feel this, that the people from the West feel like they got badly treated during the COVID period. You know, it was periods it was helicopters going over the top, you know, like you weren't, didn't see them hanging out over the top of Mossman. Um, my cousins you, were getting fined. Were they? Driving down the road, yeah. $1,000 too. But like that's, oh, I I had my uh, <laughs> I had my stints with uh, with what I how I felt on uh, online and and they kind of um, close you down, something like that. I didn't yeah. get a visa to fight one time, so yeah, yeah, it was. I'm, that's fucked up. <laughs> that, I mean, that's totally fucked up. You didn't get a visa to fight. They wouldn't let you fight in in one of the UFC events. Yeah. Yeah, well, the world's the world is very political, and you come from a you're sort of nearly the opposite of political, if you know what I mean, like incorrect, but like politically incorrect. Mm. But at the same time, where you come from, that's how everybody wants to be. But that, I think that was a perfect yeah. example during COVID of just how what how people what what West is a thought of is in in and, and, and it showed that one of the like. Most critical times during, like, since whenever was, has anyone been locked in the house? Yeah. But then to think that you could go to the beach down here, but you couldn't drive down the road where I was from, once again, fuck you. Yeah, there's, log there's no logic. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> we got more trees, we got more area out there. Like, we, there's a bigger chance to keep away from people, but I don't know. That's. I mean, do you, but you don't feel as though... I'm lucky I left because if I was here, I wouldn't have... Yeah, you would have blown up maybe. Yeah, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't yeah. have liked that. Yeah, So, but, but, but do you feel as though... I mean, I've got to be careful because... Yeah. I, come from <laughs> I know, this, you're going to get me in trouble, fuck. No, 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 I want to get in trouble. I come from the area too, yeah. like, but... but and I don't want anyone to think I've got a chip on my shoulders because I don't because it is what it is. I don't give a fuck. And, uh, <laughs> but, like, I don't want anything you got a chip on your shoulder either. No, nah, but, but the, like that whole shit. Like but, but the unfairness of it all. Like, uh, let's not talk about a chip on your shoulder. Let's just say there is an, there's un, something's unfair. It doesn't make fucking sense. Okay? So it's unfair you don't like me because I'm half Samoan, half Ab Aboriginal. It's unfair that you know I'm a fighter. It's un you know, because that's not, a, you know, I'm not a lawyer. I'm a fighter. That's mm. what I made my money. So unfair I come from Penrith mm. um, because you don't like me because I come from Penrith. You think I'm a shitbag, you know, because I'm not, Well, I mean, that, that's just an unfairness. Is, but, is that the best but, way to describe it? But also, again, that's what I don't – that's what I'm also kind of sick of is is we've always just been – all right, so for example, Mount Jewel. Mount Jewel once upon a time was uh, fucking what was – what did they call it? Um, Struggle Street. 
So why, why out of everything that we're good at, you put struggle straight on the national television and that represents us? Yeah, I remember that show was on TV. Do you remember what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That struggle straight. Yeah, I lived yeah, across yeah, the road from yeah, my, yeah. my brother. But like out of everything that we're good at, you fucking put the that worst label. thing that we have on TV to represent our people and where we're from. Get fucked. I think this is what 2-7 is our project is to do, is to show that we're about adversity. We're about overcoming these things and we've got things that we have big companies. We have we have smart business people out there. We have people to to show that we are different, you know what I mean? We're not just fucking everything bad about everything, you know, and I think that's what I'm kind of, that's what I stood up for, that's what I stand for. Like, Fuck you, yeah, I'm loving that. I'm getting the hairs on the back of my neck stand up mm. when you say that because like we're better that's than inspirational. That. Like that's, that just only represents a little bit of us, but like that doesn't define us, that doesn't, that shouldn't hold us down, you know what I mean? Like, and for a long time I think I was there, it's like I'm from that and I'm like, I wonder what, Kids just keep going back in the door. What, what, whatever we know is because we don't have someone like giving us a fucking giving us a run. You know what I mean? Giving us a kick up the ass. Oh fuck, we can do it. And I still talk the same. I still dress the same. I still, I still live in the same area. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know I and mean? so, so it seems to me then, Ty, that what you're doing is more than building beer companies, more than doing two seven projects, more than being Bam Bam the Fighter, doing shoeys. There's a lot more behind all this. Mm. There's a lot more, th there's a bigger thought behind the whole thing. Mm. You're not trying to be some superhero, but there's a bigger thought it's about other people. It, like it's what, where yeah. you come from, what you stand for, what you're capable of. Definitely. I, know, I often wonder why people don't think people from the West or any or any other area that's not as, you know, expensive, why they think that those people can't do as well. I just never understand the logic around that. Like Expensive, it's a million dollars a house in Mount Druitt. Yeah, but they're saying they're saying Who would have thought of that? Like, like, same as where I, my house where I grew up, Punch Bowls, oh, sold 1.3 million yeah. or some fucking thing. I couldn't believe it. But like, but people, but what, I never really understand why people think people from the, another area aren't as good as them. I don't, I don't get that. Like, I just don't get that. Have you ever thought it through? Like, I mean, why do you think that's the case? Why do you think their shit doesn't stink? Why do you think it's they think they're better? <clears throat> to be honest, I don't know because I've never thought they are. So I don't really know why they think that. Do you care? Not at all. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're just going to do your thing then? <laughs> just do my own thing, yeah. And just – and and how important is it you to get the two seven projects, um, you know, um, from the area stuff, you know – getting young kids to believe in themselves, how important a, a mission is that for you then? Well, I wouldn't say it's like a mission, but I think it's like what I wanted. I, it makes me proud. Yeah. And I'd only do things for me if that kind of – so it makes me proud and it makes my people proud. So it makes me feel good at the end of the day when I'm going to keep doing it, you know, so. Yeah, that's fucking cool. Mm. That's so cool. And – you reckon how many more years you reckon you're in the UFC? Oh, I've got ages. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, what I've is it? We're talking about 10 years. Oh, it, yeah. But see, the thing is, I don't want to go out and like, I want to have a good crack, make my money, and then move on to to, to different things. Yeah, next thing. Yeah. Which is why, if you've got any other things going on, because I, I did, I was told that you got a thing called, <laughs> I wouldn't even know what the fuck this is about, the flower shop. What the fuck's that? Can you tell me? <laughs> yeah, we just started construction today in there, so it should be good. Um, it's it's Penner's best kept secret. So seems that way. You're not going to tell me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The, on Instagram is uh, um, the the uh, on the Instagram account is called the Flowers Shop Penrith. Flowers Shop Penrith. Yeah. Mm. It's a secret. When will it be sort of up and operational? When you reckon? Should be hopefully by December, by Christmas time. Uh, okay, yeah, that's we'll, cool. We'll, we'll, yeah, hopefully the construction goes good and we fit it out properly and the bars ready, <laughs> and then uh, 
And then uh, yeah, that should be running by December. Sweet. So should the uh, brewery. And so tell me about so the because you. Seven, so. What about the brewery though? Like, so, like the Drink West right now is getting brewed somewhere yeah. else, but you're going to start brewing it yourself. Yeah. yeah. So just explain that. So we um. We signed a deal with Coles, which puts us in liquor stores. By next year, by next week, should be around four hundred something stores. Wow, so we're going to go bigger, and um, so that's really good for us. That's, that's a going, big deal. Yeah, Coles is Coles. We've been doing. We've been signing with Coles for a few months now, but now we want to go bigger, which has been good. But once we can brew our beer in our home, where we're we going to brew it. Think it can give us uh, more opportunity to move bigger. And you brew in the west suburbs, everything yeah. out west. Totally. So I mean, it builds jobs. It um, it does a whole lot of stuff. You know, and yeah. it really showcases it too. And I guess you, I mean, I guess if you the brewery, you could have a bar there too. Yeah, definitely. It's got yeah. a bar. We got a drinking area. We want to. Uh, Are you building it now? Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's uh, actually um, it's they're calling it the manufacturer hub. So some of, they're putting about a billion bucks into it. Wow, and they got um, all other workers workers around us. So the post is going to be at the back, like different um, industries and stuff. Different yeah. industries around us. So we're going to have around four hundred workers around us Shit. every day, and um, come for a drink at have a uh, drink, drink after West. work, mate. Yeah, yeah. Go <laughs> but that's pretty clever because I, I, actually that's what um, Bolter did. They up up mm. they're up at um, um, uh, Corumbin or something like that. Up in Queens, bottom of Queensland, there, um, and uh, they their brewery was like a bar, and that's how they used to promote their beer. Just have local people come to the brewery, and that's how they kicked it off. Just mm. drinking beers. I mean, you're ahead of them because you're you're going to be distributing out of Coles, but it's pretty cool to ha have people be able to come to your brewery and uh, see all the big shiny things that are going on. Again, it sort of showcases what you're doing. Yeah. It's a that's that's pretty exciting. Well, yeah. So we got like me, Tyson, and and Nath. So we're all, we're all, uh, you know, doing our own thing, but we're all from the same place, and I think that it's going to be a place where you can come and and, and get to meet us. And well, we'll you um, you see me down at the local shop anyway. All the but time. I, I want to come out to I want to come out to two seven. I mean, like, uh, well, when that opens, I'm definitely. I've already. We, uh, you've helped uh, me and my crew. Yeah, you come in here and gave us a, gave the boys a few tips, and they loved that. And uh, we even talked about it after, and we were like, you know, I was like, oh, so what? Are you? And they're like, no, nah, it's good. Like, helped us with the mics and what what they what has worked and what hasn't worked and stuff like that. Because we like fucked I up. said, I think it's, I think that's the best thing about learning is finding out where things didn't work for other people and finding out how we can make it better. And, it's interesting how you worked out the UFC helps you get that too. Like, like maybe if you weren't. Bam Bam to Avasa, you know, doing what you're doing. You know, if your boys had reached out to me, I might not have. I said, oh, look, I'm too busy or something. I don't know. Yeah, and yeah. I don't mean that I just did a Christian superstar, but it does help. Like, it, you know, I said, oh, yeah, cool. Like, and I saw what you're doing with the beer. I thought, yeah, I'm happy to help. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, uh, I and appreciate I, it. Thank and also you. that I know what you're doing. I, I get it. You know, what you're trying to do out in the area. I get that. Yeah. And if I can kick that along, that's, that's great for me. Well, we're just going to do something here, man, that, uh, well, I think we've got to do this. So I was wondering if you want to – I've got a sh shoe here. I bought oh, yeah. a fucking brand new shoe and I'm going to drink some of your beer out of uh, my shoe and uh, maybe we do it with a whiskey chaser. Don't, you up to it? Yeah, you don't have to ask me to <laughs> Like I said, I'm ready. some things that don't change. Right, let's, let's get the beer. Well, you crack the beer and I'll get the whiskey open. So am I doing a whiskey shoe? Yeah, or? both of us. Okay, get, no, yeah, well, not yeah. whiskey shoe. But, well, you can do it in the yeah, shoe I can if you do want. a whiskey shoe. Okay, Why and not? I'll get my shoe off too. Let's do oh. it. And then, but, well, so I've got to do my shoe. Yeah. Or you can do this one if you want. Yeah, we'll go to. Okay. Yeah, They're brand new. <laughs> so get. I don't, open have, the, a, I don't open, have as many shoes as you. I'm open, not. The <laughs> open the beer up and we'll do a we'll do a bit of each in it. So. All right. Well, okay. You open my beer and I'll put some whiskey in this one. Only the best drink West. You know what I'm saying? Oh shit. The best whiskey. You sweet. Yeah. Here, put that in there. Are we going? We're doubling. Yeah, we're doing double up, man. Fucking oh, man. Give us this. That's what I'm talking about. Righto. All right. Here's to you, it's mate. Game time now. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thank you. Actually, that's pretty fucking good, dude. We might be onto something there. That's pretty fucking good. 
I like that. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you, mate. brother. I appreciate it. Same here. <laughs> that was good. That actually did fucking taste fucking good. Nice. That did really taste. Those good. two things go together. We've, we've got something happening. We do. This could be the new thing. <laughs> <laughs> Whiskey in bed. Oh fuck! That was good. I wouldn't mind. Yeah, you could, I could sit here all day and drink it. Well, I'm not going to, but I could. <laughs> that's why. That's. I don't drink much anymore because because it gets me in trouble. Like you know, like you're getting you're getting yeah, the yeah. mischief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no good for me. But uh, but I love a drink. Thanks for joining me, Ty. That was awesome, man. Thank you, brother, for having me. Yeah.